I was wrong about the Dragon Master Magia. What's up guys, we're back with another, yes, another Dragon Master Magia discussion video. And I haven't really had a topic like this that I've made two videos about maybe ever. So this is quite unique. But because there's been so much discussion around this card, it seems to be the thing people are talking about. I figured why not make another video, follow up on my first video based on what's happened in my live stream, some comments I've seen, some things people have told me, and what the market has shown. So before we hop into it, I mean, I'm still pretty, uh, I, I would say I'm pretty passionate about this topic. I'm more interested in this card and what's going on with it than I have been in a lot of things in Yu-Gi-Oh for a long time. So it's pretty cool actually to be interested in something and be going back and forth, but there's something I need to mention that I didn't mention in the last video that I think is still consistent. A lot of the complaints I'm seeing about the card being a only a QCR. So I'm not even really going to talk about it being only a QCR much in this video, but I do want to mention this. A lot of people are complaining, hey, this card's only a QCR. I wanted to play it. Yada, yada. Sure. Reasonable argument. I did notice that a lot of these same people are the same people that are complaining every time there's a blue eyes card. That's a cover card. That's a new retrain, new dark magician, whatever. They're like, oh, come on. That card's lame. I talked with Rhyme Saba this and he said those are the same people who were telling me the blue eyes guy has an opinion or whatever so before if this card maybe had a secret rare and a qcr in this set i feel like those same people who are complaining that it's qcr only would be saying that hey oh why they put another blue eyes card on the on the cover card why don't they give us some good stuff you know why why don't we get some cards that are more playable but instead because it's not they're like what do we complain about now oh it's only a qcr you know so it feels a little bit like they're looking for something to complain about which is definitely the case with Yu-Gi-Oh a lot of the time so may or may not be you that's doing this maybe if it is you you can look inward i saw someone on twitter actually say i just like to argue that's definitely the case with a lot of people too so that's just something i was going to mention that's not really what we're talking about today let's move on to the next thing and speaking of little factions of people on a side of an argument there's a new faction that i noticed while i was streaming yesterday we did like a six hour live stream opening for the magia there was a few people that were in there that are like this is the best investment ever that's their new thing like they're campaigning for the magia to be the best uh, investment in Yu-Gi-Oh history. Like if you buy this card, some people were saying it was going to be like some crazy numbers, like $20,000. I don't remember what they said. I was like, is this a joke? But I saw multiple people saying it. So it felt like a Bitcoin thing or something, but they're like, yeah, this Meiji is going to be so expensive when in 10, I think it was 10 years time. It, it's going to be like some crazy number. It was like more than like a blue eyes right now. It was like 50,000. It was something dumb, but there seems to be like people that actually believe that right now. They think that if you buy the Meiji now, it's a crazy stonks investment and you're gonna make a lot of money. Obviously, I disagree with that, but we're gonna keep going. I just wanna mention that that is, there's actual people saying that right now. This video is sponsored by Whatnot. Whatnot is an awesome auction platform that I am selling on basically every week. They are streamed live, so if you have not been there, you can come into the stream, you can watch me open something awesome, and you can participate by buying some of the packs, buying some things I have available, and of course, just watching and winning potential giveaways. I usually do about 10 giveaways a stream, with a bunch of them being completely free to enter. And on Whatnot this Thursday, we'll be opening a first edition Lord of Tachyon Galaxy booster box, searching for the legendary ghost rare in here. One of the best looking ghost rares. Check out this picture I have of one right here. So if you guys want to be there for the awesome action of opening that awesome booster box, or you just want to be there for a live stream and giveaways, or you want to see what I have for sale on the Buy It Now tab, just use the link in the description. You can get $15 free credit to use on Whatnot if you are a new user. You also want to bookmark my stream while you're on Whatnot. Search Ruxin34. You'll be able to see the upcoming streams. Bookmark the stream this Thursday at 5 p.m. Central. I can't wait to see you there. Thanks again to Whatnot for sponsoring this video. So total for this set, I've opened like six cases and five boxes, I think. And no, maybe a few more if you include Whatnot, because we opened six cases and two boxes in the live stream. We opened three boxes and some videos. And I think we opened like maybe two or three boxes in the Whatnot live stream. So we're over six and a half cases and I have not pulled a card. And we're actually gonna go over ratios today of what you can expect from a regular QCR card. This is something that I think a lot of people do not actually realize. Whether you watch, unless you watch me in my live streams where I say it constantly, or you watch maybe House of Champs or something like that, you're probably not going to hear about the ratio of a QCR card very often. So usually you're going to get about three QCRs per case. A case is a box of boxes. So there's 12 regular boxes that have 24 packs inside, you know, that most of us buy, you know, you buy a booster box for 60, 70 bucks, whatever it is, that has 24 packs inside. There are 12 of those boxes in a case. Inside a case, so that's the 12 boxes, you're usually going to get three QCRs. So what every four boxes you're going to get a QCR? There are 25 different QCRs in the set. So Dragon Master Magia, QCR, great. 
one in three. You get one every four boxes, so you pull the Magia one every four, right? No, because there's 24 other QCRs that you have to factor in. So if you're gonna go with like ratios and math and all this different stuff, you take one in four boxes and you times it by 25 because there's 25 different ones you could get. That makes one in a hundred boxes to pull a specific QCR, not just the Magia, any QCR, they all have the same ratio, unless they're short printed, which we'll talk about later. So even if you get the IB, which is the worst QCR, it's about $24 right now, that takes one in a hundred boxes. So, oh wow, that $24 card is that hard to pull? It is. So now that we've kind of talked about regular ratios of what you can expect if there's no short prints, there's also something to consider called clumping, which is where if you buy a bunch of cases, there's certain cases where you get like multiple of one and you get zero of another. And that's not because that one's easier to pull and this one's harder to pull. That's just how it works. If you had 100 packs in front of you and you grabbed like 10 packs, you could in theory grab all the packs with good cards in them, right? Because if you just pick the right one, you get the right cards. Or you could grab 10 packs that have nothing nothing in them. They're all garbage. It's just randomness. That's kind of what clumping is. It's basically there are a bunch of cases. Certain people get sent a bunch of cases and they may or may not have grabbed the right cases when they get sent out. And by right, I mean, what has the good cards in them? You can't really know. They're not always going to be completely distributed evenly. And sometimes the printing has to do with this as well. Well, they're, they'll have them like really close to each other in print. So when they end up in the boxes and cases, they're like in ones that come right next, next to each other and the clumping is more inevitable. So now we talked about those. Let's move on to is this card short printed? This is something that during my live stream, this was a huge topic for because we were live for like six hours. So there's a lot to talk about or a lot of time to talk I should say a lot of people think that the Magia was short printed I think there was also I think maybe M. Cole made a video saying one guy uh opened 57 cases and they pulled four so it's probably a store or something like that I don't I didn't watch the video I just heard that via my chat so whether or not that's the right number or not four out of 57 would be much shorter than the one in 100 boxes which is one every 8.33 cases so if you did that times four you get 36 or 37.33 so you're getting four out of 57 yes yeah, not really i mean that's a lot worse than 37.33 so so i could see why people would think maybe it's short printed so i decided hey why don't we take a look at uh some some data and see if this can help us so i went through all the different listings on tcg player this is just one uh platform there's obviously ebay and other things but they will tell you on TCG Player, how many are listed? So right now, the Dragon Master Magia has 10 listings for $750. We'll talk about that in a minute. 10 total listings. There are a couple other cards we can compare this to. We have two other QCR-only cards in the set. One is the Sky Striker Ace Ray, which has 24 listings, and then the Sky Striker Ace Rose, which has 20 listings. So the reason we're comparing those is because they are other QCRs that are QCR exclusive. It just makes it easier to compare. We could also compare it to regular QCRs as well, because in theory, like that, the ratio, if it's short printed compared to regular, would match up. But I decided to take these three and look at a little data. So I went through the sold tab as well. Here is the total available that we just saw in TCG. I went through TCG player sold and clicked and went through, counted every single one, 52 Magia have sold. So it looks like here, oh wow, that's that's shorter print. There's only 10 available, but there's more available here. But if you look at the sold, that's where it gets crazy. 52 Magia have sold based on all the hype and everything. People think they're gonna miss out potentially. I don't know, we'll speculate that on a little bit. The Ray, 31 have sold, so not as popular as the Magia. And then the Rose 33. So when you add up the total number of QCRs for each one that have gone through TCG Player, whether it be available or sold, Magia actually has the most. 62, 55 for Ray, and 52 for Rose. That means there have been the most listed and or sold of the Magia. So there is another side. You could say, well, the Magia is the most expensive, so people are most likely to list it. That is also true. But having the most listed, it seems unlikely that it's short printed if there's more right now. So like, let's say even if more people listed, like for it to be short printed, it would need to be like 40, 38, something like that. I mean, I don't think there were 24 extra listed, right? That would be a little bit crazy. So this data itself doesn't prove that it wasn't short printed. It's just another sample size, but it does lean toward, hey, this is probably just a regular printed QCR. But because they're so hard to find, you know, there's not that many available. Now let's talk about how I was wrong about this. So yesterday during this, or it wasn't yesterday, whenever that was during the stream, a couple days ago, during the stream, I was saying this card and in my video, this card's gonna be 75, 100 bucks pretty quick. I think I said in a few weeks when the dust settles, but really I didn't expect this, let's be honest. I didn't expect what happened. $749.94 is the current low 
price. So I guess there is this one. This guy has 0% and 28 sales. So how do you have 0% on 28 sales? No feedback? Maybe he just started or something. I don't know. Then these other people were going all the way out. I mean, we got one at 1500. That's insane. But I, I mean, I already think this is insane. This card has gone way up or from the 480 or whatever it was when I first made my video. It's pretty insane. I mean, I did not expect this. I thought it would go down. I thought there'd be more listings, but the low ratios and not having secret rare, it seems like people have hopped on the bandwagon to buy the card. Now, one thing I did mention is there was potential for a vendor buyout, which I think is possible to have happened. There's only been about 50 of them bought. I don't actually think that happened though. What I think probably did happen though was all the discourse, all the people hearing about the card drove a lot of interest toward the card and caused people to buy it. And I think a lot of these people didn't know about QCR pull rates or specific QCR pull rates, the one in 8.33 cases or one in 100 boxes. They didn't quite realize how rare it was. They knew it was only a QCR and like, wow, that's that's pretty rare or whatever. And then once they heard people talking about it, they saw me open six cases and not get it, which is you know still under ratio. But if you watch someone open for six hours and not get one card in a set, it's kind of like, wow, that card must be really rare. I should probably buy this. I think that stuff like that drove buyers to actually go buy it at 480 or whatever, thinking it was a great deal. Now, was it a good reason to buy? I personally don't think so. I'm consistent with what I said before. I still think this card is way overvalued. And now I think it's even more overvalued because it's gone up since I last said that. I don't think I was wrong in that regard. I think this card is worth way too much for what it is because the card itself is at $750 right now. It has the same pull ratio, most likely. We're not 100% sure it wasn't shorted as the other QCRs. Some of the other QCRs, if we want to take a look here, all these cards in theory have the exact same ratio to pull specific ones. So if you open 8.33 cases, you'll get one of each of these on average. Occasionally there will be clumping like we talked about, but so all the same ratios, keep that in mind, $750 for this card. If we go all the way to the bottom, let's go to the second page, last card, Ib, the World Chalice Justice Star. This card is $23.99. This card takes one in a hundred boxes to get, same as the Magia. I don't think people really consider that when they, they freak out about, oh man, this, this Magia is really hard to pull. We gotta buy it, it's totally worth $750. This card is also that hard to pull. I know, yes, there's also other versions of Ib right now. That is true, that is true. If you want the Magia, you're gonna have to open eight. If you want the QCR Ib though, you're also gonna have to open eight. So sure, the Magia doesn't have another print right now, it's going to guys it's going to do not do not it's not a stonk okay just i i have been wrong before but this i am 99.9 percent .9 sure i mean come back and tell me i'm wrong in, a, in two years if it hasn't had a reprint if it hasn't had a reprint in two years i'm gonna be shocked and once it hits that reprint it just becomes just like any other qcr it's one in 8.33 cases, but it also has a cheap version. So why would you pay $750? And at that point, when it gets the reprint, everybody who's holding the bag for having bought out this card, hoping for the stonks, you're going to be hurting a lot. So just know that Ruxin mentioned it. I mentioned it. I told you, don't do it. It's so expensive right now. It costs like the same amount as a 10K dragon. I think it's currently like seven or 800. And so there's one more thing before we end this, this video. That's probably the last time we talk about Magia, unless I'm I'm wrong in two years. Maybe we'll come back and be like, wow, it actually was a stock. It's worth $10,000 now. It's not going to happen. There is potential market manipulation with this thing. And what do I mean by that? As I was talking about with the vendor buyout earlier, there are only 10 Magias listed. So on average, it's at 750, 900. I mean, you would have to buy this. If you bought out all of these, the total would be 2,500, 3,500, 4,500. If we just added all these up, I'm not gonna add them all up exactly, but it's probably around $10,000 to buy all 10 of these copies. You could then make your lowest listing the $1,500. Sure, there's other eBay listings and stuff you'd have to deal with. You maybe have to buy those or let those would have to sell, but you could completely buy out the TCG player market for about 10K, which is not actually a lot if you start listing stuff at $1,500, $2,000, and then people are like, oh my gosh, I missed the chance in Magia, and they go buy it because they think, oh, there's no way I can get it. They're all bought out. Everybody bought it out. It must be worth the money because that's what happens in markets, especially when it's so easy to buy it out. $10,000 is a lot of money, but when it comes to having the entire market in your possession, it's not that crazy and sure there are the other 50 that sold maybe those people would be like look if i can sell it for 2k now i'm gonna flip it and that eventually you know people start flipping and they're flipping it for 750 thousand and you know it's what's already happened for 480 750 a thousand two thousand three thousand eventually it stops 
it stops somewhere and somebody gets stuck with a three thousand dollar card that's actually 200 bucks when the reprint comes as i said i still feel very strongly this card's overvalued i think that what's happening with it is insane it's actually really fun it's fun to see something crazy like this happening but it's not going to be fun for somebody when they get stuck with a very overvalued card and a reprint hits in mega 10 2025 or whatever so i'll ask you guys the question is this card 10k dragon which by the way, has gone down ever since release. It's down to like seven, 800 bucks, started at 1500 bucks. So is this 10K Dragon? Is it something that want, people want to believe is like a 10K Dragon? Is it better than 10K Dragon? Or was it just a cool card that became a talking point in an okay set because we had nothing else to talk about? I want you guys to let me know in the comments. This was a fun one. And I will see you guys in a couple of years to find out if I was right about this card. Shout out to Toll Info Show, Ernesto Diana, America Deutscher, KK Beats, Brandon Chaney, Ian Musa Jr., Barding, Robert F. Changeling, and Adelso Garcia Jr. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.